Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala subhanaka la ilma la ilma ma'alamtana innaka anta alimul hakim, Allahumma alimna ma'infa'ana wa anfa'ana bima alamtana wa zimna ilmin ya kareem Continuing with our studies on al-arba'a wa nuthaba Muhammad ibn Aslam al-Tusi rahimahullah ta'ala We start our statement of the uthaba wa fisha'ni haqi al-mar'ati ala al-zawj That which has come regarding the rights of the woman has over her husband Qala al-musannifu rahimahullah hadathana ya'ala ya'ala ibn Ubaid Qala hadathana Muhammad ibn Amna al-Qama Saduq عن أبي سلمة عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا. The most complete of the believers in terms of iman are those who have the those who are the best in in character. Right? A person can be a alim, a faqih. Right? Yet his character is what bad. That's possible. And a person can be an layman. Right? But his character is fantastic. He's a person of good conduct. Right? And that is the reason why he is given a high station in paradise. Right? إذا أتاكم من تضلون دينه وخلقه. If those who come to you and you are, uh, you find uh, يعني happiness and you are pleased with their religion, number one, and their خلق. There's a خلاف. There's a يعني there's a تفريق here. العرف تط العرف يقتضي المغايرة كما هو الأصل. And so here we have the أصل which is uh, إذا أتاكم من تضلون دينه وخلق. A person might have deen but lacking خلق. And a person might have strong in a خلق and may may lack in deen. The perfect one is the one who has both. One who has both. Right, and so the most complete in iman uh, from the believers are those who have the highest level of a character. طيب. وخياركم أي أشرفكم خياركم لنسائكم. The what the most noble of you are those who are the most noble to their wives. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says وعاشروهن بالمعروف and live with them, be with them in معروف in good. So you have to show goodness to your wives. What is goodness? Of course, يرجع إلى العرف. It returns back to the عرف of the of the people. فخياركم خياركم لنسائكم. And so we see here. The uh, okay, the messenger of Allah encouraging that the husband is yani, uh, uh, dutiful and good to his wife, right? And that he shows goodness to his wife, and that he is loving and caring to to his wife. هذا هو الأصل, right? فقد استحللتم فوجهم بكتاب الله. You have indeed made the uh, private parts halal for yourself with the book of Allah, right? And so if that's the case, then you should, uh, yani, fulfill that right that they have over you in terms of being good, good, good to them. طيب and being dutiful to them. طيب خياركم خياركم لنسائكم. That as we know, Islam is a two-way, two-way relationship. It's not just a one-way thing, right? The husband is good to his wife, and the wife also has to be good to her husband, right? And there are حقوق that the husband has over the wife, and likewise the حقوق that the wife has over the husband. And sadly today, uh, in the hyper, uh, يعني uh, feminist society that we live in today, there is only what the people try to think of one side. They think it's a one-way street that the woman. Um, gets all the rights, but يعني, no responsibility, right? As we know, الغنم بالغرم, right? Well, uh, يعني الغنم بالغرم, إيه نعم. فإن أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وخياركم خياركم لنسائكم. And the author knows this by mentioning in the next chapter, باب في شأن حق الزوج على المرأة. So after mentioning to us the right the, that the wife has over the husband, that the husband has to be dutiful to her, good to her, caring towards her, loving towards her, uh, and يعاشرها بالمعروف that he gives with her in goodness, and that he uh, fulfills the rights he has, that she has over him in terms of the nafaqah and so on. He follows it up with the next chapter, بَابٌ فِي شَأْنِ حَقِّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى المرأة. Right? To keep things balanced. Right? Just as the wife has rights over the husband, the husband also has rights over the wife. بَابٌ فِي شَأْنِ حَقِّ الزَّوْجِ عَلَى المرأة. قال مصنف رحمه الله حدثنا عبيد الله بن موسى قال حدثنا إسماعيل, إسماعيل بن عبد الملك عن أبي الزبير عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه أن أو عن أبيه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا ينبغي شيء أن يسجد لي شيء ولو كان ذلك كان النساء لأزواجهن it is not befitting لا ينبغي لا يجوز not allowed for a thing a created being to prostrate another created being هذا في شريعة في شريعتنا إن هو شريعة it is حرام for a مخلوق to prostrate to another مخلوق right of course in the شريعة لكن before us it was permissible Adam had the ملائكة prostrate to him likewise the father of Yusuf and the brothers of Yusuf and the mother of Yusuf prostrated to Yusuf alayhi salam, of course, sujood tahiyya, right? Uh, so that's fi uh, shiri'atin, that was jayiz. But in our shiri'a, it's not allowed. For a makhluq to prostrate another makhluq. As is coming in the famous story of Mu'ad ibn Jabal, when he went to Sham, and he saw that uh, they used to prostrate to each other, he came to, back to the Messenger of Allah and prostrated to him as a greeting. And so the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned this hadith, بغي, it's not allowed for a person, a makhluq, to prostrate to another makhluq. وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَلِكَ كَانَ النِّسَاءُ لِأَزْوَاجِهِنَّ If I was to command it, then it would be the wife or her husband. Meaning, that's how much of a rights, that's how much of a huquq that a husband has over his wife, that she must obey him, right, in everything, right, and you and tuti'ahu fi ma'roof, that she must obey him, that which is, of course, good. And man salla, as is coming in the hadith, fihi laaf, that a woman who prays her five, 
right and fasts her month and gives her zakat and goes to her hajj etc right and and and, and, uh, wa ta'at zawjah, and she obeys her husband right wa ta'at zawjah, ta'at, uh, ta'at zawjah, she obeys her husband that she will enter into jannah from whatever door she wishes right كما جاء في الحديث فيه ضعف طيب but محل الشاهدي and and this محل الشاهدي is supported by many of the ahadith الرجال قو many of the ayat الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض وبما أنفقوا من أموالهم فالصالحات القانتات الحافظات للغيب ما حفظ الله ولا تخافون نشوزهن أي عدم طاعتهن right نشوزهن نشوز من those who are do not obedience to you they are disobedient to you right so the حق that a husband has over his wife is that she is obedient to him that she is submitted to him right of course in معروف in in goodness right and and the most uh, يعني the most uh, يعني the, the 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 strongest manner in which this is expressed this this obedience is expressed is through what as sujood right ولو كان ذلك كان النساء لأزواجهن I would have commanded the wives to prostrate their husbands right and that's the as we know when we want to when we want to prostrate Allah subhanahu wa taala that is a sign of us ماذا it's the best sign of us showing our complete ububiyah to Allah subhanahu wa taala which is why we prostrate to him right the sujood Right, is the act of worship that we do, which is brings us closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because it's the expression of your uh, humble, your, your, your that you put yourself in your most humblest of situations, that you show that you are completely subservient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by putting your head, which is your most prized position, right, your the most prized asset of your body, putting it on the ground, right, for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right. And so here we see that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is showing us how much of a right that the husband has over the wife in terms of obedience. That if it was allowed for a person to prostrate another person, I would have commanded the wife to prostrate her husband, right? And so we see here it goes both ways. The husband has to get, be with her in goodness and you ma'ashir her bin ma'roof. That's her haq, right? Khiyarukum, khiyarukum nisaikum. The best of you, O men, are those who are best to the wives. You don't hit them, you don't abuse them, you don't, of course, يعني, unless they come with no uh, shoes, as Allah subhanahu wa taala mentioned. وضربوهن وضرب غير مبرح كما جاء في الحديث. طيب. That's of course in the case of no shoes. But in the case of the asr, which is when, يعني, in the in the in, in the normal relationship between the two uh, spouses, the husband and the wife, what what the husband is supposed to come with, al 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 That's the haq that the wife has, al ishratu bil ma'roof, right? And the haq that the husband has over the wife, and and tuti'ahu that she obeys him, that she obeys him. That's the asl. Of course, there may be exceptions in certain scenarios, but the asl is what that the husband the haq that he has is obedience from the wife. And the haq that a wife has from the husband that he lives with her in ma'roof. And of course, if you bring these two together, then they really complement one another. These two points complement each other. And it brings about a solid family. Right? Because if you have from one side the husband giving the ishrah bil ma'roof, meaning he is satisfying his wife sexually, he is being the man of the house, right? He is actually fulfilling his wajibat, he's actually doing what he needs to do, right? And he's coming with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon him to do, right? And he is not just coming with that, but he's also coming with the uh, being the man, being a person who is yani, strong, physically strong, able to sexually satisfy his wife, financially satisfy his wife, he has everything on lock, he has a good house that he's built for his wife, he has yani, uh, and, and his children, he's got everything on lock, alhamdulillah, right? The result of that should be that the wife obeys him, that the wife willfully submits to him. Because... If the wife now um, uh, is capable of understanding and she isn't um, yani affected by the ideologies that are out there today, then the result of what the man has done for her should be uh, obedience. Should be obedience. So she she willfully obeys him in that which, that which he commands her to do. Unless, of course, he's commanding her with sin, of course, which she doesn't obey him in that. But the answer is that she should obey him in that which he commands her to do from Mubahat and Salah. Right? And so, if that's the case, then these two points will come together and complement each other. You coming with al ishrat al ma'roof should be reciprocated by obedience from from the wife. However, sadly today, um, even if a man was to come with these points and come with al ishrat al ma'roof, you may find that the woman may not obey, right? May still not obey due to maybe feministic uh, tendencies that she may have, or the opposite. A woman might come with obedience, but the man is abusive, and the man does not have ishrat bil ma'roof, even though the woman obeys him. And so both things can happen. He, he might be influenced by um, certain tendencies that are you know, considered black pill or red pill, right? Uh, that he gets affected by and that he takes it to the extreme and then uh, you know, uh, uh, makes it upon the wife and, and uses it to abuse, abuse his wife, even though she's willfully obedient to him, right? And so you know, uh, the, the solution to that is to remove any um, outer uh, uh, or extra 
um, uh, uh, the ideologies that have nothing to do with the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now you focus on uh, building relationships uh, symbiotic and healthy relationships between men and, and women طيب هذا والله أعلم وصفه بإذن الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدوا أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته